Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Old School Iron. And today we are working on smithing. Yeah, I wanted to try out the Giant's Foundry and it's going to be the secret to reinvigorating this cash stack because I'm down to 1 million cash. Yeah, I've kind of been blowing through it with Kingdom and all that sort of stuff while I've been away from Slayer. So my plan here is let's go ahead and make all our bars. I'm going to do the same one to one trick with mithril and gold and then once i've run out of that i'm going to go ahead and make my addy bars because i need a combination of addy and mithril bars for the giant's foundry but more on that when we get there for now we just deposit all our coins our entire cash stack into the coffer and we have 14 hours here it's definitely not going to take me 14 hours uh, but just in case so what i do is i fill up the inventory fill up the cool bag and then go ahead and uh, drop both the sets in. So I shift click to empty and then shift click in the bank to fill. And the hardest part for me is always remembering to get the goldsmithing gauntlets on. But once the cool number gets up to uh, over 200 ish, I go ahead and pick up uh, the mithril and start dumping it in until we ran out of bars. And here it is, the final gold ore. <laughs> Just gonna do it uh, as a ceremonious thing. Um, I still have a lot of mithril and addy to go through. Um, normally you would like buy up, or at least maybe like pre uh, Giants Foundry meta, you would buy up gold to like match so you could have gold all the way through. But realistically, I don't need to with Giants Foundry. The good news is that the goldsmith gauntlets go away. The bad news is I'm going to be getting a lot less XP per hour. So here is the uh, final inventory. My last six Addy bars. Or nine Addy bars being made. And uh, let's see the spoils. So you can see based off the copper timer that it took me about eight hours to get this done. Uh, the XP rate dropped off massively once i got to addy bars only it was like 90k xp an hour because you have no gold and you're not getting xp every single trip but the bar spoils are where it's at i have 10,800 mithril bars and 5,942 addy bars the gold bars are also there but i don't really care about them right now but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready for Giant's Foundry now. I haven't actually done it. I've just looked at the math on the wiki, and this approximates out to like 6 to 7 mil experience and 12 mil cash. I forgot to show off my smithing level. I got up to 81 smithing from that. So there is a sort of intro quest to Giant's Foundry basically kind of just teaches you how to do the mini game tutorial but they made it a quest so i think that's a good way of doing these things okay giants quest done um i actually really like the tutorial it teaches you a lot i think it's a great way to do it and it uh rewards people for doing it i'm gonna go ahead and do a couple hours of this and once i got a really good handle of it I'll come back and uh, let you know how it's going. It is the fourth sword I've made. I've kind of figured out the minigame. Uh, it's kind of simple. But that is all skilling minigames. And we're actually going to get our first level here from the Foundry. Uh, each sword is about 12k experience. Uh, I did make a mistake uh, here. So I, I lost three quality points, but I still get 12,500 experience. Uh, for it and now I am able to buy my first mold so each of these molds gives you different stats um, and there was a really nice guy who made a reddit thread telling you the optimal order to buy them in and the first one to buy is point so now if I look in my tips I have the point so if I ever get anything that's flat it's going to be a really good sword but for now let me just do this um, and deal with the mold. And the ratio that I'm doing is 18 mithril to 10 addy, because this gets me the max amount of quality without getting another layer to it, uh, because the amount of steps you have to do depends on the quality of your sword. So I'm at the maximum quality 
uh, for a sword with five steps to it. I seem to get about 10 swords per hour right about now. So here we are. I finally have the ability to use the point. It's only been a couple games, but we'll see what the experience I get at the end of it. It should be much higher than what I'm currently getting. Okay, moment of truth. How much extra experience are we going to get here? Uh, so I got 14.5k smithing there uh, versus like the 12k I was getting before. So just owning that one mold got me an extra 2k on that sword. So the more molds I get, the better. And the next mold that I need to buy is... I can either get the spiker or the chopper. So that one's 450. And where is the spiker? The spiker is also 450. So I got to do one more sword before that. New personal record in terms of quality did take me a little bit longer than I would have liked, but 15k XP per sword. With a lot of the molds unlocked, I'm getting a lot more points per. Uh, like this one was just 146, which is getting me 15k XP per sword, which, and I, I kind of banked on getting 12k XP per sword, and I make very few mistakes. So this is actually uh, going quite well. This is my maximum possible quality that I'm going to get is 158. At least with the bars that I'm using with my 18 Mithril 10 Addy. Um, yeah, 17.3k XP. Like, I'm going to get a lot more XP than I thought I was. The last mold is going to be bought. I've completed 35 swords and I'm going to purchase the Serpent Blade. And I'll have all the relevant molds. Uh, the... Two here, the Corrupted Point and the Juggernaut Forte. Both of them are outclassed in every single combination. Um, they're good, like, if you're a lower level. I think, yeah, this one's smithing level 61, and this is smithing level 49. But because I came here at such a high smithing level, they're not actually useful. We're going to be saving up for the smithing outfit, which takes a total of 15,000 points. So that'll be about 100 swords as it gives a 20% chance per piece to increase my progress at Giant's Foundry. So it's going to really speed up how quickly we can make swords. So I now have enough reputation at 61 swords to be able to buy the first piece of the outfit. I'm not exactly sure how much extra progress we're going to be getting um, when it does proc, but I'll pay attention for this, this next sword and see how often it goes. So I didn't notice too much different with having the 20% bonus progress chance, but I'll see the time it actually took me to complete the sword. Maybe it's just so subtle that I didn't even notice it. I'll talk more about XP per hour once I have the full outfit, but right now I'm getting about 15k XP per sword, and I'm doing about 10 swords an hour. Put those two numbers together, I'm getting like 150 to 160k XP per hour, which... It's not the best, but it's not terrible in the fact that I now need to bank, like, my bars just go so much farther that I think in the overall grand scheme of things, even if it's less XP per hour, it's still efficient to do this as an iron, especially because I'm going to get, like, 50 mil cash from it as well. But once I have the full outfit, we'll know more about what my effective XP rates are. And buying the second piece, the gloves. Kind of funny how you can buy duplicates of it. I'm sure someone's accidentally bought them uh, to the same. But what I can do here is I can use the ice gloves with the smith gloves. And now these act as ice gloves as well. So I don't need to worry about swapping back and forth like I need to do with the blast furnace. But my first day of swords are done. I got uh, 90 of them done. Again, still in that like six minute range. Um... 15.5k XP on that sword. 15k seems to be what I've just budgeted. This is a pretty monumental occasion for me, but with this seaweed run, I should, assuming I don't get really bad RNG on the rolls, have 99 crafting banked. At least the seaweed portion of it, so technically I don't need to come back here anymore, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get more seaweed so I can do the no pickup method because there's two methods when you're turning the giant seaweed into glass. Either you pick up all the shit you leave on the ground when it makes more than your full inventory or you just say screw it, I'm going to go make more seaweed. So in another 10 or so runs, I should have enough 
seaweed to do it that way. And depositing the final seaweed, I now have 6,800 seaweed in order to turn that into molten glass. Getting like 60,000 molten glass, I'll need to also uh, get like 20,000 more buckets of sand. So that'll be fun. But yeah, you can see I've banked all the way up to just over 99, primarily from my molten glass and seaweed, and then all my uncut gems. I decided to not include the battle staffs or the gold bars because I'm unlikely to go ahead and make 15,000 gold bracelets, even though that is a huge chunk of experience of about 390k. But yeah, I'm, I've got about another like five to 10 seaweed runs in me in order to get this number up high enough that I don't have to pick any molten glass off the ground. Today is also a big day because they changed the quest rewards. They changed all the experience to the master and grandmaster quests to make them higher, make them feel more rewarding. And they decided to reward the players who've already completed the quest. So I can talk to Purdue here and get all this quest. I'm going to get 120,000 agility, 8,000 construction, 35,000 crafting, 35,000 fire making, 40,000 fishing, 35 hunter, 40 mining, 25k runecraft, 90k slayer, and 50k thieving. Not bad. I'm most happy about the slayer and agility experience. And as I finish off my grandmaster and master quest, I'm going to end up getting more experience than otherwise that will claim all this owned experience i don't know if i'm going to gain a level well that felt good i did not oh i gained a room crafting level there we go up to 67 room crafting but it's the only level i gained and i can also gain a little bit more experience from the legends guild mr radmius urkel uh, gives us four lamps that we can use on any of the legends quest uh, skills and I'm kind of debating between herb lore and prayer. Prayer is important because the higher the prayer level, the more my prayer pods do, and it's really good to get. But at the same time, herb lore just means a lot more herb runs, which take up a lot of time. So it's a difficult decision uh, between the two of them, and it's going to be about 50k experience. I feel like it's just too valuable. My herb lore level is high enough now, uh, and I'm doing consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and put this all into prayer. So I'm, I got 22,000 for the first lamp. Oh, it's going to be like 100k prayer. That's actually so useful. I'm going to gain like two levels from this. Yeah, I'm almost up to level 72 prayer. That was, that was definitely worth it in my opinion over her floor. 139 complete, and this should be enough for the full outfit. I think so. Oh, yeah, I have over 4,000 reputation, which means I can buy the trousers. will get me the full outfit. So now that I have the full outfit, I'm going to do one more 1810 sword, which has five of these things, just to show off uh, exactly how the outfit works. So normally to get through this initial red bar period, it requires 10 hits here, as you see, actions. But I'm going to gain a little bit of extra progress and it's going to actually end up being 10, but I'm going to get a little bit of leftover. So here's our 10th hit, and we get through the red bar, and we got a little bit into green. So if I wasn't wearing the outfit, it would be right on this line, like perfectly on this line. But I got a little bit of extra into green, so I have a little bit of progress stored up. So now I only need to do 19 actions instead of 20 at this station. So the outfit saved me about two seconds for each of these. It's going to save us 10 in total. But the major time sink with this entire process and what you spend most of the time at at Giant's Foundry is temperature management. For each section of these, I have to deal with the temperature twice just because there's five of them, so they're pretty big. So in total, I'm going to the temperature spot 10 times. But if I can do a more complicated one that has a higher level, I could instead go and have six of these things, and then I only need to go to the heat once, sometimes. So the amount of times that I'm dealing with the temperature is lower, and it should lead to me completing swords faster. So that sword took me just under six minutes, which is a pretty normal time for not getting 
Lucky Brock, so we're going to go ahead and do another one, but have a slightly different bar composition this time. Instead of 18, I'm going to pull out 14 of each bar. This will give a bar score of 95, which is 6 higher, and it should work out better. You'll see that there's now 6, 2 of each, um, alongside here, and our temperature bars have gotten slightly smaller, but they are not so small that we have to go to the heat station every single time. If I had a slightly higher one, uh, the bars would be smaller even with six actions. It just, for different bar score numbers, there's ones where this works out well, and the bar score number I'm currently using with 1414 works out very well for not having to reset your heat as much. Yeah, I probably could have got away with that one. So this is a really good example. I'm probably gonna be able to do this entire grindstone in one cycle without getting the bonus hit or anything. Um, so it means I was able to save myself a reheating cycle, which should save me time. For the green polishing one, because the heat goes down with the direction you're going, um, it actually takes away your progress. Like it's harder to one cycle it. So you only can really one cycle it if you get the, the yellow box here. But for the yellow one, because the heat is going down and you're pushing the heat up, and it's working with you, that makes it a lot better. Did overdo it on the heating, so I'll we'll probably have to cool it down unless we get another yellow croc. But I think I've used both up already on this sword. Oh, wait, you get three because there are three on here. I forgot about that. That's another reason why this is better. You get three of those. So let's see how long this sword took. I feel like it's faster. Yeah, I finished that sword in four minutes and 19 seconds. So a full minute and a half quicker than the lower complexity sword just because of how the outfit interacts. So swapping over to this 14-14 method is going to be so much better. It's going to leave me in a position where I have a lot of mithril bars left over at the end. If you look here, I'll use 4,500 Addy bars and 4,500 mithril bars, leaving me with like 3k mithril worth, but I can just turn those into plate bodies and or keep them in the bank. And this is going to lose us about 1 million banked experience, but I still think I should be able to hit 95 smithing with the swords I have in here. In terms of the rewards we want to purchase, we still want to get the double ammo mold in case I ever need cannonballs. And then just for, like, completion log, say, oh, I will buy the Colossus Colossal Blade. And then the rest of it's going to go into these uh, three consumables. This is a plus four boost. Uh, this gives you double experience when smelting, and then this one gives you some ores. Now that I've got the method under control and I have my full outfit here, I'm going to go ahead and do a one-hour test to see just how much experience I can get in an hour doing 14 Mithril, 14 Addy. That is my 14th sword done, and I have a minute 20 left on the timer, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it here and adjust the little extra time I had left to the total XP per hour. But yeah, I got a new best sword of a quality of 164. That's when you do 14 Mithril, 14 Addy, get the best molds, and then you don't make any mistakes. But yeah, most swords are like in that 17k XP range, but I'll be back once I've done the math. So over the total period, I gained 233k smithing experience, which means once you give me, once I give that extra little time, of that minute 20 back, ends up being 238.8k smithing experience, which is 14.3 swords per hour. And the total bars used in both Addy and Mithril was 200 per hour. So this is pretty good. This is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I was just hoping for 200k, but I got two more swords than I thought, and this outfit is doing wonders. I'm going to be out of here a lot sooner than I thought. And that is the last sword of day two. I'm now up to 192 total swords. I do not need another commission. And level 90 smithing! Woo! What can I do with 90 smithing? I can make Gafroon scimitars. I can make Torva armor, so I guess that's good. Let's go to next. And I can make all the dragon fire shield. And there is 77 hunter. What does that get us? That, that's another level. No, black chins are in the 80s. 
And that is the end of day number three. I'm up to sword 321. Again, I'm like pretty consistent with four minutes. If I'm being lazy, it gets up to like four minutes 30. But reputation wise, I have 27,000, uh, which means I have basically the reputation to buy all the one time purchases. And then I have 20k to spend on the Grog, Catalyst, and Ore Packs. Pretty momentous occasion here, but we're going to be picking up 96 farming. That actually doesn't unlock anything but it unlocks us the ability to boost. As you may know, there is the Garden Pie, which provides a plus three farming boost, which means we can boost all the way up to 99. One of the rewards for getting 99 farming is the ability to plant unlimited spirit trees. And the cool part is you don't actually have to have 99. You can boost your way there. So I can go ahead and plant the rest of my spirit trees. I have to kill eight Supla's get the four twos for the payment and i got 81 defense which means like i was probably a couple thousand experience away so it's interesting for the actual growing portion of it you don't need to be boosted up to 99 you only need to be boosted up when you a plant it and b check it genie thank you for the 830 herbal lore experience now this one is probably the least useful of all the spirit trees. I think some people don't even plant it. There's no reason for me to go over to this side of the island as the only time I want to be on miscellaneous or, or etc. is dealing with my favor or um, if I'm collecting my kingdom. So I don't see there being any use to this one, but hey. It's a completionist thing, so I'm going to go ahead and plant it here. There it is, our final sword. Unfortunately, I went a little bit AFK, and I only got 128 quality. But still enough experience to get myself up to 95 smithing. That is 400 swords, and that's exactly where I'm going to leave it off. I can now make basically everything for smithing, and if I need to do some one-off stuff for like making like a rune two-handed sword... For a diary, I can go ahead and buy Kovacs Grog here um, for reputation and then boost plus four smithing. The double ammo mold, which is going to let us make eight cannonballs for two bars with each use. So it just basically doubles the speed at which you make cannonballs. So if I ever need to do any AFK. And then there's the Colossal Blade here, which... I don't think it actually has any use for me, but maybe it'll be useful at some point. And worst case scenario, it's just a green collection log. And then just for testing, I'm going to go ahead and buy five ore packs. Let's see what these ore packs have in store for us. You know what? I didn't expect much, and I'm still disappointed. Um, at least I get some coal back, which is what I'm really running out of. But the good news about buying all of that stuff is now the collection log is green, which is nice to see. And I'm just going to keep my remaining uh, reputation points stored away in case I ever need frogs, smithing catalysts, or ore packs. But bars wise, we started with 6,000 Addy and 10,000 Mithril. So I used about 5,000, 6,000 of each bar not too shabby for getting all the way up to 95 smithing and our cash that grew from 500k all the way up to 13 million hey, i have level 99 in uh my cash stack now <laughs> but why did i get this smithing level i got it for one reason and one reason only well not one reason only but this was the main reason the already elite diary i now have everything i need for it every elite diary has one kind of grind associated with doing it it's not just checking a box so for arty diary oh my god i got a long bone that's hilarious uh for the arty diary i have to imbue a salve amulet which requires eight hundred thousand nightmare zone points so i'm doing my old setup with um proselyte and doing all melee bosses and i'm just afking it it'll be two hours before it's done i have 300k points to go a couple hours later we have our 800k points and we can imbue our self amulet 
basically all this imbue does is it makes the salve amulet boost work with magic and range abilities as well instead of just with melee so that'll be helpful for vorkath but with that we completed an elite task in the arty diary and now it's kind of just going through a checklist we got six more tasks to go this is kind of a ceremonial thing for me whenever i do the arty elite diary whether it's rs3 or old school i always like to have this as the final task a rune crossbow from scratch the first yet hammered in yanel Make ourselves a nice little crossbow string here. Find you. And at this point, we're now able to make a U stock. And we get to assemble the crossbow together. Completing the elite task in the Ardy diary, and we have completed all of the elite tasks in the Arjun era. Area, speak to two pints at the Flying Horse Inn to claim your reward. Completed all the elite tasks, and here we go. We have the Ardoin Cave 4, uh, which gives plus 6 prayer, which actually I think now becomes my best prayer cave. And then plus 6 stab and plus 6 magic attack. So I think if I get any bursting tasks, I will go ahead and use this cave. But alongside that, there's a couple other things we get. First off, the teleport to the farm patch is now unlimited. Before I was limited to five herb runs a day, but now I can do as much as I want as long as they are grown. So that's super nice because both the Arty and Lumbridge uh, Draenor teleport are unlimited now. On top of that, Bert will give us 84 buckets of sand, and that kind of plays into banking 99 crafting that we got done earlier this episode because I'm only waiting on the buckets of sand and while 84 buckets of sand a day is not going to get me enough for 99 crafting it's going to help out if we look in the bank right now I have 1918 buckets and I need to get up to just over 20,000 buckets so if I were to rely solely on Bert it would be like 200 days which isn't sustainable but every month that I wait saves me an hour of mining sand so I will take that. And then last, uh, we get 25% more, more marks on the already agility course, uh, which is really good because when I need more stamina, when I need more marks, I now have the best way to do that. And all I got to do is make a fuck ton of summer pies. Lamp wise, I'm going to go in prayer again. I don't feel the need to get her blower up. The only thing I'm waiting for is 86 her blower for super combats to be able to boost to make those. And with how much herb runs I'm doing and going back to Slayer soon, I think it's actually going to be better uh, to put it into prayer. That's going to get us a level up to 972 prayer. Wishful thinking that I'm at 92 prayer. And with that, this is going to be the end of the episode. Got a lot done with 95 smithing uh, and completing the RD diary. I think next time I'm going to focus on another elite diary kind of maybe one an episode now we'll we'll knock out an elite diary as this is a goal i want to get done but i hope you enjoyed the episode and if you do like comment down below and subscribe to get notified of when the next episode in the series is coming out have a good day